Hello everyone and welcome to Pablo Escobar's video series. This is going to be vlog entry number 9 in the series and we'll be kicking off for season 26 starting out in Kaiba 4. This is going to be quite a challenging season and I don't really expect any great things. I'll be lucky to just pick out one or two wins here and there. But uh, more likely than not I'm probably just going to drop down to Rhodium which is fine. The roster does need quite a lot of work anyway. So we started out our round one against an opponent named Molstone and we opened up with this original Kylo versus the Old Republic team. Fortunately T3M4 was not here and we were able to make quite quick work of this. Still quite a staple counter and still quite fun to play but also nice to open up to it and get some confidence going um, ahead of whatever else might come. At least it's a pretty standard solo. So we were able to pick up 69 banners here and went into the second round with the Treya lead against the Geos. Um, this was also pretty straightforward, unfortunately Treya didn't get pinned down, Sion was able to draw all the attention to himself and we were able to unlock this team quite easily and picked up 65 banners along the way. Fortunately a bit of protection recovery loss. Then we went up against the General Grievous team which was quite highly relict and deciding to learn from previous experience of using my undergeared Revan team against this, I decided to try using gas to break through this wall. However, the problem with the gas team is the poor health and protection recovery and uh, yeah, as you can see, it turned out to be quite a messy battle. Fortunately, we still managed to decimate this team to some extent. Um, maybe a bit of a better play there would have been to hold off and try and just pull off an aerial advantage earlier. But anyway, it went away with 54 banners. Then went up against this newt gunray led scoundrel mismatch kind of team and decided to use the Jedi and I driven team against them. Um, this was pretty effective with quite a good amount of banner recovery from Hermit Yoda's abilities etc. And we were able to come out of this battle with a total of 65 banners. Quite straightforward and a very comfortable, very nice win. Next battle we went up against was the Ewoks and this is my first round of using Wampa. Um, we were able to solo this quite easily but it was a little bit touch and go in some points I felt. But uh, this was only a gear 10, just geared up to gear 11 Wampa I think and he only had the Zeta, I don't think he had the Omicron for this round. And he actually did surprisingly well, um, quite a fun character to use definitely. I'll be interested to see what happens in the future rounds. We then went up against a Phasma led first order team, um, a remnant from my opponent's first um, SLKR push and I took this uh, Count Dooku led uh, separatist team with um, I think it was Emphis Nest who was occupying the one spot which is why I decided to try Wampa out against the Ewoks. Um, in theory this team should have been good, maybe a bit of misplays here and there, but in the end we were able to still pull off a fairly comfortable win I think um, and saved a good team, so 54 banners from there. I then decided to try my Empire team against this Mon Mothma team and in retrospect probably not the best idea. I um, actually didn't realize the effect that Kyle Katarin has on this team and somehow this Mon Mothma team managed to get up way ahead of my Empire team so I lost quite a lot of banners in this battle ending off the match with 55 banners in total but still able to clear a path unfortunately not to victory. <laughs> we then took up the um, Bounty Hunters against a boss cleared um, Bounty Hunter team and this was quite fun to use. I've um, Since I moved Django over to my Separatist lineup under Dooku's lead, I've moved Boba Fett instead to the main Bounty Hunter team. So he's going to need a bit more gear and also help with the ship that I've got from him that's already fully stored. But uh, this team was able to do quite decently here. Um, the whole pro focus was to just try and buy some time until Mando could get off another Disintegrate on, Bo on Bosk. And then it was just dancing around with uh, Dengo and try and keep him from sniping any banners. But an easy 65 battle win there. 65 banner win, sorry. We then tried this mismatched Jedi team up against this um, Admiral Akbar Rebels. And um, unfortunately the shortcoming of this team remains that there isn't a consistent damage dealer. So I thought I would add um, Vet Han, but um, against a little bit of a more synergized team, unfortunately, we were only able to pick up one banner for taking on one guy. Then I decided to bounce back a bit with the Imperial Troopers against this Bastila-led Jedi team. Um, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. 
Um, there was a moment in this fight where I was thinking maybe I should have targeted Jolie first, but it worked out and we came away with 65 banners. Then circled back and decided to clean out this Aqua team with my Padme team. And perhaps that might have been a bit of a better option rather than trying to go for Glory and trying to um, see if we could undergear, underman that team. We then started out round 2 against um, opponent Torsen Bondra. Um, here we managed to pick up a score of 822 against a score of 1090 and unfortunately conceded a second round um, of this first week. So opened up against this General Grievous team using my Jedi and I Driven team. And we were able to pull off a win, um, but it was a bit dicey in some points, especially because it took a while for Grievous to come out from stealth. Fortunately, the savior was able to proc in time and keep Jolie from dying. Um, then it was about trying to keep Jedi and I driven alive till he could get a turn so he could circle around to the Grievous. Once Grievous dropped, then it was just a matter of trying to recover as much banners as we could. But I think we'd kind of um, run the clock a bit and our damage output was a bit higher than expected. So we came away with 62 banners. We then went up against another Mon Mothma team and having learned the lesson with the Empire's failure in the previous attempt, um, I decided to rather use the Triumvirate, figuring since they're attacking out of turn, this should actually work quite well to get the Triumvirate to try and let them hit themselves into the ground. And it seemed to work pretty well I think, um, we were able to win this battle here and come away with 65 banners. Our next matchup was against a Newt Gunray led um, scoundrel kind of team I guess with War Tembo. So I took my Bounty Hunters up against this team and we were able to do fairly well here I think. Um, got rid of Django pretty easily and then managed to take out Newt before you could snipe a banner. So a nice 65 banner win there. We then took my um, Dooku led Scoundrel team up against the Phasma team. So this one worked out a bit better than the previous round because it was a little bit more undergeared to kind of accommodate people like Django and uh, Dradika I guess. But uh, they were still able to get some decent work done, pick up 61 banners and save me having to use a better team there. And we then took up the Imp Troopers against the Night Sisters. Pretty straightforward, pretty standard counter and not too much of a hassle. Once Gideon pulled the Termeter back it was just a matter of picking them apart, which was done pretty easily and a easy 65 banners to be scored over here. Next came the Empire team versus a Bosk led Bounty Hunter team. And this was pretty straightforward. Um, the main thing was to try and land the fracture on um, Boba. I think the big concern here was this was a bit of a more relict team than the Empire team was running. Um, at the time of this, it's only Vader and Pelp that are relics in this team. But we were able to put down a Relic 8 Boba Fett on the opposing team just by having better crowd control abilities with this Empire team. So pretty satisfying and 65 banners to show for that. We then went up against the fleets and decided to take the negotiator fleet up against the malevolence. Um, not much to say about this, I've played a few of these in the um, squad arena and since I've 7 star this negotiator I'm actually enjoying using the 5 Zambara fighter in the opening lineup. He's able to dish out quite a lot of damage and get his offense ramping up nicely. And more importantly as the target locks start landing he's able to start punishing the opposing team. Um, definitely better than having him sitting in the in the hold, and I figure like Rex has like one move early on, and then he's kind of wasted after that. So far, he's definitely is paying dividends in the opening lineup. We then had a chance to try out the finalizer against the Thrawn um, led Empire team, and um, yeah, I think I'm still getting the hang of this finalizer fleet and trying to get used to how to use them effectively, etc. But um, for the most part, still quite a fun team to use. Unfortunately, I feel like my Echelon is still quite weak, probably quite undergeared and needing more star levels to kind of beef up a bit more, especially since its main function is to tank, I guess. So for now, until the um, Thai Echelon is able to come online and be able to soak up more hits. I'm using the Thai Bomber to kind of be a bit of a absorber and try and keep some heat off of the Thai Silencer. Unfortunately when Thrawn got his insta-kill he took out two of my ships. It left me in a little bit of a sticky situation but fortunately the two fighter pilots were available and able to 
break through the rest of that fleet and net 56 banners. Um, and we then ended off with this Padme Cats team against a Kylo Ren Unmasked. I think it was a Relic 7 team, yeah. So not too difficult, but just a little bit tedious to work through and netting 63 banners in the process. I then decided to like, just throw a Hail Mary and see if my General Anakin Skywalker could do something against this Jedi Master Luke. And uh, unfortunately the answer was no, he could not. His um, damage output was pretty decent and, f and I think a General Anakin Skywalker can beat a non-ulti Jedi Master Luke. But um, with Jedi Knight Luke on the team, the damage output is significantly higher and it's a much harder team to try and counter. I think part of the thing is that they do have some ignoring taunt capability which allows gas to get a bit more use but um, unfortunately weren't able to do too much here against this team um, hopefully once i get c i might be able to have more of a chance that then brings us to round three and we went up against an opponent named dirty sanchez this was the only win of this week unfortunately and we managed to pull a score of 1106 against his score of 1021 so we opened up with this Geo fight, unfortunately they were able to pin down Shreya quite early and annihilate her, <laughs> mind the pun, but we were able to still clear a win and claim 62 points. I then took the Imperial Troopers up against a Fun-led resistance team and managed to pick out um, a 65 point win. Once the turn meter was pulled back, this team really doesn't get another chance to do anything. So really enjoying having this Gideon at quite a high speed at the moment. Um, I think it's close on to 360 or so, which is pretty handy to have in my back pocket. Our next matchup was against a Jedi Knight driven team and we decided to use uh, my Padme Cat team against this. Um, prior to getting SLKR, Padme was my number one arena squad and um, Jedi Knight driven teams and Shakti lit clone teams were actually some of the easier ones to clear out. I guess Geos as well. So that seemed like a pretty easy picking and we were able to come away with 64 banners there. Then took Nest out for a hunting party against a familiar Ewok foe and we were able to comfortably clear a win here. Fortunately no dazes from Logray despite his multiple attempts. So Infus Nest was able to keep hammering off counter attacks and ramped up damage quite nicely as the battle went on and eventually picked this team apart after the Elder Ewok fell. So a pretty comfortable 68 banner win that we were able to net here from Infus Nest's one woman crusade against the murder bears. Our next matchup was against a boss led team and I decided to try using my Jedi driven team against this. The idea was to first take out the two characters who had insta kill abilities. So first Boba because the execute had caught me off guard in previous attempt and then Janko since he usually opens up with I think it's the flamethrower first before doing anything else. Once they were out then Dengo is obviously going to be hiding constantly. Wuss. <laughs> so we decided to take out Greedo and then go down for Bosk and Dengo lost. Fortunately able to come away with 65 banners there. We then decided to take this Empire team out against the Phasma team and um, just basically got ahead on turn meter and locked down this team and kept them behind constantly with Mara Jade and Pulps. So pretty good win here from my undergeared Empire team. Um, but as the gear is being advanced slowly it seems that Mara Jade and Short Trooper are the only two that are really lagging behind. But um, hopefully that will change in a bit of time. So that was a pretty straightforward battle. We then decided to try and go for a big one here and use General Anakin Skywalker against this Ray team. Unfortunately my Twitch malfunctioned and did not record the rest of the battle. So just taking a screenshot here of um, that battle. It's a single win with Ray um, using General Anakin Skywalker into 501st and we were able to come away with 60 banners. Pretty interesting, pretty exciting and very fun and um, very triumphant feeling win. 
The remaining three backball teams we went up against was a Night Sisters, which we 65 banded with the Bounty Hunters, a Veers led Imper Trooper team, which we took out with a Dooku mismatch team and cleared 63 banners, and Wampa was able to improve further and get 69 banners against the Phoenix team. But for a lot of this Kyber 5, it feels like Obi Wan. I will do what I must. You will try. Unfortunately, I am very outclassed by a lot of these guys, and uh, I'm not going to take it too seriously. I know that the account needs a lot of work, and I'm trying to slowly work towards that. And in light of that, or in the spirit of that rather, I'm going to then look at the update for the Sithi Tunnel Emperor farming plan that I've drawn up. So, so far we've had some improvements. Um, Dark Troopers sitting at gear 12 with 5 pieces, I'm just waiting on some Kyra tech, but the same with Thrawn, also gear 12 and 5 pieces. Both of them seem to need the same amount, so I'm thinking I will probably put the gear first on Thrawn, so I can start advancing him towards the Sithi Tunnel Emperor's requirements. Dark Trooper is dealing decent enough damage at the moment that I think he can stay where he is at, at the moment. The other characters on this are Mara Jade, who's currently up to gear 9. Um, with four pieces attached. Short Trooper is at gear 9, also four pieces attached. And there hasn't been too much change on the others. I think um, the Iron Versa Trooper team is going to be like an absolute last resort. And I think once I finish the Empire team, and then I'll get her up, excuse me, around to them. But so far, I think a little bit more investment into Short Trooper and Mara Jade will definitely improve the effectiveness of this um, Empire team. Plus, I think. Thrawn is also a Relic 6 requirement, so that's going to take a little bit of time to get him there, and while we're busy plugging away on that, the other gear should start filtering through. I think I'm mostly held up now on Carbantes and a couple of Chirotex, and Mara Jade, Iron Verso, and as I'm seeing now, some of the Relics actually are requiring quite a lot of Cairo um, to be able to transition them. So, it's on my regular farming plan, but the flow of it is a little bit slow at the moment. But in any case, there's still some progress I guess, and any progress is definitely welcome at this point, I suppose, to help advance the account further. The next um, half of the team shows some improvement in progress as we cleared off another requirement by getting Dooku up to Relic 6. I've also been able to invest some gear in Maul, getting him to gear 11 with 3 pieces, and that Sith team is starting to piece together quite nicely. We were also able to advance some gear on the Armorer, what is kind of stuck where he is, but we'll get around to relicking him up sooner or later. I'm actually thinking of whether to try and invest a bit more gear in him and put him in as the final piece of my um, um, team that I've got going with Dooku led, as the Dooku led team, until Sith Eternal Emperor is eventually unlocked. My thinking is actually to slot in the Sith Empire Trooper in Dooku's place in that Sith team and use that as a backwall defensive team. At the moment they don't really do much because they are severely undergeared, but maybe with a bit more defensive uh, power and with the evasion etc from all, there might be a team that just trips up a few people here and there. I'm not expecting them to get a huge amount of defensive wins, but even if they're able to snipe a couple of banners, might be a bit of a clutch team to have in defense, especially in the back wall where they might have used up some of their stronger teams for the front walls. And this Empire Mismatch team also most likely going to end up being a back wall team, but um, slowly piecing together as the weeks go on. So that's the progress of our C farm, the main thing being that we were able to add Dooku's Relic 6 to the mix. So if we're looking over the account update now. So there's been quite a bit of decent progress in the account over the past few weeks um, since the last round of Grand Arena. I've invested quite a lot and um, Dot Loco to recently published a video that I really took under consideration or advisement and used to formulate a plan in improving the account. Part of that was um, 7 starring any character that was at 7 star to try and push short shop currency. So we were able to go from 4 million to 400 and 4 million 350k. 
um, a bone a boost of four of 350k sorry currently we don't have an active relic form but our gear 13 projects currently are drawn at gear 12 plus five pieces stock troop at the same and one power who's at gear 12 plus three pieces um he will be needed eventually for general night loop but just all around a pretty fun solo character to use our gear 12 project is dot mall at gear 11 plus three and stormtrooper at gear 11 plus five Energy forms currently are the Armourer, Cara Dune, Resistance Hero Finn, and the two ships that have been here forever basically, the IG-2000 and the Vulture Droid. The Zeta for this past week was given to Mara Jade for Infiltrate and Disrupt, and the Omicron went to Wampa for the Cornered Beast, so hopefully we'll have some fun footage to show of that in the week um, 2 update that's coming out soon. So that's pretty much it for the account update part. With regards to the shopping plan, from 7 storing a whole lot of characters, we were able to push in, I think it was up to 40k shards in the shard shop that we've been using to buy up relic pieces wherever we can to try and expedite the relic progression. Um, and that's what basically helped with getting Wampa up to those three pieces very quickly. So our guild store currency is still being used for gear and mostly Kobantis to try and ease that since most of my characters are currently locked on a Kobanti bottleneck. The squad arena currency has been relocated now for prestige materials to try and push through the finalizer and saving up for that. I'm about 10 shots short of 7 starring that as well. The get one currency has been used for clutch bias just to finish off any purchases I need and get two we are now starting to focus on the malevolence which is currently at 6 stars, 23 shards and short shop we are just plugging away at that. So that's it for this week's account update, thanks so much for watching and if you guys did enjoy this please feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel if you want more to see more updates and if you have any advice, feedback etc please feel free to leave it below. Don't forget to also check out the Twitch channel on the link in the description bar and I'll try and stream a bit more frequently. I think I've got my Twitch sorted out on my iPad so hopefully we don't have a cutoff like what happened in that gas and ray fight. But once again thanks so much for joining, really appreciate it. Cheers and see you in the next video.